Hello, my name is Michael McCarty and I'm a system engineer from the Michigan region of McNaughton McKay Electric Company. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about Rockwell Automation's SIP Safety Laser Scanner and we're going to walk through a quick start guide. So we already have a project created for this demonstration. We're going to be using a compact GuardLogix PLC with version 32. The Safe Zone 3 laser scanner supports all GuardLogix PLCs version 20 and up. This project also has the laser scanner already added into its I.O. tree. The scanner communicates with the PLC over SIP safety, so we only need to run power and Ethernet cable to the device. One great benefit of the Safe Zone laser scanner is that the configuration software is embedded in the add-on profile of Studio 5000. From here, we can easily launch and configure the scanner. You can see we have a configuration file stored on our computer. When we launch the field set configurator online, it's going to compare the local configuration file with our current running configuration. And if they're different, it will ask us if we'd like to upload or download the configuration. Now that the configuration software is open, you can see some of the information displayed on the overview screen. Uh, first of all, we can see a LED indicator readout just like the front of the Safe Zone scanner itself. And we're also going to get a live view on the monitoring plane uh, of the scanner. So you can see as I would bring my hand close into the scanner, you're going to see that field change, and we're also going to see the LED indicator change as well on the front of the Safe Zone 3. So throughout the rest of this video, we're going to take a look at some of the configuration pages on the scanner and how to set it up. First off, the application tab. This will allow you to select if the laser scanner is going to be used in a stationary or mobile application, such as an AGV. Uh, changing this setting will adjust and limit some of the configuration options on other tabs, such as the resolution. Moving on to the monitoring plane, we can adjust some more application-specific settings. Uh, the safety task drop-down allows us to select an application type that best fits our system. This will then pre-configure the object resolution and limit some options. The object resolution will adjust the scanning algorithm to best detect the size of the object we are looking at. Uh, this will be dependent not only on your application, but also on the installation of a laser scanner uh, where it's mounted in space. For example, mounting the scanner at waist level would be best ideal suited for a 70 millimeter resolution. Mounting it at a lower level may be best suited for a 40 or 50 millimeter resolution. We can also adjust the number of times our laser scanner detects an object before changing a tag in our controller. Uh, this is important for applications where weld sparks are common or there's other sources of lasers. One thing to note is as we adjust the multiple sampling rate, the reaction time of the laser scanner will increase. Finally, we can see the maximum sensing range on the scanner. It's listed based on our settings, both for the protective field and the warning field. Field sets are configured for the scanner in the fields tab. We have a grid that shows up on the screen that can be used to help us create an accurate field in space. Uh, you can also see these blue lines. That is the active plane that we're monitoring uh, with the laser scanner currently. One nice option that we can use to configure a field set is to use the Suggest Field option. This will act like a static teach to the current detected plane. Uh, and this is a great feature if there's a complex contour in your application that you need to detect. We can configure the laser scanner with multiple field sets. Within a field set, there are one or more fields which can either be a warning field or a protective field. In our application, we have already configured two field sets for the left side and the right side of the laser scanner with a slight overlap in the middle. We could then use these independently to monitor either side of the application. Let's create a new example field. To do this, we will first create a new field set, and that's also going to add in one field for us. By clicking on the field, we can give the field a descriptive name and we can also define if it's going to be a protective field or a warning field. To add in that area, there are a few object tools. Using this circular plane tool, we can define a constant radius area around the base of the scanner. And then using the end acres of that field, we can adjust the angle around the scanner that's monitored. For more complex shapes, there are rectangular tools and a free draw tool. Well, we can click each point in the area that we want to monitor and then double click it to finish. As you can see, the field will automatically adjust to create a valid plane moving in a straight line away from the scanner. We're going to continue using the field sets we've already created for this example. And we're going to move on to the monitoring cases tab, which will help us bind our field sets that we've created to tags in the controller. The Safe Zone 3 can actively switch between eight different monitoring cases for flexibility in your application. And these are selected in tags labeled A1, A2, B1, 
B2, and the same for C and D. In this example, we're going to set up two different monitoring cases, one that monitors the left and right field sets, and one that only monitors the left side field set. You might use this in an application where maintenance needs to be performed on the right side of the machine, so you always want that field to evaluate as if a hazard is present. Each of our monitoring cases can have four different cutoff paths, which will be tied to four different tags in the controller as seen in the safe output row. We can adjust the fields in the cutoff path by clicking and dragging our field sets from the right into the monitoring case table. When we're happy with our field set configuration, we can download the settings to the running laser scanner in the top left corner. If this is the first time you're downloading to your laser scanner, there is a default password of ABGM, all capital. You will be prompted to change this on your first download. Downloading to the laser scanner will automatically generate a configuration report, and this is a great report to tie to the paperwork of your system. Uh, the configuration report also gives us great detail on the laser scanner, the field sets that are monitored, and the safe out outputs that are turned on and off when a hazard enters the field. We do need to verify the configuration before downloading and applying these settings to the running device. Finally, we can apply the configuration, close the software, and return to our PLC program. Let's first take a look at the controller tags generated for the safety laser scanner. A couple of important output tags to note are the activate case switching tag and the monitor case select tags. The activate case switching tag must always be set to one to switch between monitoring cases in our application. Tags A1 through D2 then determine which monitoring case is active, and only one of these tags can be active at a time. Moving on to the input tags, you can see there are four tags to monitor the safety fields and four tags to monitor the warning fields. We can directly use these tags in our safety program as inputs to turn on and off our safety outputs. In this example code, we have one case select tag, which we are going to use to switch between monitoring cases A1 and A2. We can then use our safety and warning fields to determine if our left side protective fields and warning fields are clear. So first I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to block off the warning field of the left side and you'll see that our left side warn OK tag is going to drop out. Then as I move closer into the scanner we're going to see the same for our protective field left side safe OK. Next we're going to switch our monitoring case to A2 by toggling our case select tag. You can see when we do this that our right side tags are immediately going to drop out as if a hazard was present. The nice thing about this is the left side warning tags and protective fields are still going to remain independent so we can control these safe zones separately. Thank you for watching this tech support video on Rockwell Automation's SIP Safety Laser Scanner and our Quick Start Guide. For more videos like these, please visit the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel and smash that subscribe button.